this is strong stuff. You do not want to put it on your clothes, but the deer love it. And I think it overpowers not only the human scent, but it smells so good to these deer, they just can't stand it. So we go back to the same spot in the tree stand. I've got my hat pulled down low, so I'm trying to shield my face that's not hidden by the head net. I just don't want any glare reflecting off my face. We're watching bucks running through the brush, running through the cedars. They're starting to chase does. We've got does walking through and I'm going nuts. I am seeing all these deer, but they're just not coming close. Then, off in the distance, we see this big ape. I pick up the binoculars and I look, and he's actually got little kickers too. He's a 10, but he's a mature, older buck, and he's one of the ones that Sid said, green light on. Now, I just gotta see if he'll come in range. This buck looks like a giant to me. He's tall, he's got long mane beams, and I'm going nuts. I just need a shot at this deer. The more we look at him, Ryan says, I think that's the deer that was behind us, kind of in the brush that we could see steam blowing out his nose, and he just didn't give us a shot. So now we're hoping he'll give us a shot. This buck's teasing me all evening. He's coming in and out, chasing does. We're watching him out there a few hundred yards out, chasing does left and right, back and forth, all over the place. Finally, the deer turns and starts walking toward an opening in the gate. Right when he gets up to the gate, a doe runs past and he turns around and takes off after the doe. I thought, well, that's it. It was close, but he just didn't come by. This buck, I have been so close on. He's jumped the fence two or three times. He's chased different does, but he's just not coming in range. He's standing out there looking around at does, and finally, he starts walking our way. The buck comes through the opening in the fence and I'm going nuts. He's getting close, but I've got a bunch of branches. All I need now is for this deer to turn and give me a broadside shot. Problem is, I've had my recurve in my hand for so long, my bicep is trembling, my arm's shaking. Now I'm worried, can I even draw my bow back? As the buck starts coming in, of course, the adrenaline's coursing through your body. And now, not only is my arm trembling, my legs are shaking a little bit. I'm starting to breathe funny. It's every bit of buck fever that I always have every single time. This buck starts walking toward the tree stand and there's a scrape just to our left. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this buck's gonna come right into this scrape. Then he spots a little yearling that's off behind us to our right. He starts angling toward the yearling and all of a sudden, for no reason, I'm not moving, Ryan who's running camera isn't moving, the buck goes and looks right at us. That is the worst feeling in the world as a bow hunter when something nails you because now you know it's probably over. I've got my bow up, I've got pressure on the string, now it's just a cat and mouse game. This big deer turns and starts heading away. I start drawing my bow because I think I might get a shot. If he just angles enough, I'm gonna take the shot. The deer starts to trot a little bit, going dead away from me, and then he stops and looks back hard quartering. Again, I draw my bow almost three quarters draw, but I'm looking at that tiny little spot on a hard quartering deer, and I just didn't feel good about it. I slowly let my bow back down, and I was just broken hearted. The deer takes a couple more steps and then amazingly turns perfectly broadside. Now I've already got my bow up. I know all I have to do is come straight back, pick my spot and shoot. Boom! That's a dead deer right there. That's a dead deer. Whoa!
I hammered him, dude. You smoked him, bro. I was shaking so bad. I just shot a beautiful Kansas buck. We have been after, well, a day and a half. Okay, it's not that long. <laughs> it feels like forever. He smoked us, too. Did you see that? Oh, my God. He straight up hit us. Ryan, we just got him, buddy. Yes, sir. I just spooked every deer in the county. <laughs> I don't even care. Sid, how do I say this? Golly. You're right. If you hold out, you get big ones. Darn it. I hate even admitting that. No he way. smoked us, and I'm like, oh, he's got us. So I literally, thank goodness, I held my cool. Thank you. Wait, Buffalo. I held. Dude, I held my cool. I was like, I started to come back and then he turned dead away. And I'm like, nope. Then he gave me a hard quarter and I'm like, nope. And I just sat there. I literally had my bow in half draw. He turned perfectly broadside. I had to watch the back of this. I'm like, come on back. Come on back. My safety belt tightened up. I was like, come on, hit your anchor, pick a spot. Boom. Double lock, baby. He didn't go anywhere. Let's go look at him before it gets dark. Dude. <laughs> Okay, so one of us is winning $20. We saw this buck earlier, and I said, man, that's a big deer. I said, I bet he's gonna net 130. Ryan says, no, no, Fred, he's gonna net 140. So we are gonna see what he's gonna do, but it's a beautiful deer the way I'm getting mounted because that deer was on his game. He deserves it. Smart buck, took me a long time, but I hammered him. Hey, brother. That was awesome. Look at that. And look at that beautiful blood right there. Look at that. What? Oh, I'm shaking still. I don't even know where he went in this tall grass. I just saw dirt fly. I'm not even gonna look for blood. Did you get him going down? Did you get him? Oh, look at this. Oh. Dude. First, we got to take a look at the shot, though. Seriously, that's what you got to look at right there. And then, come over here. You got to look at this big, beautiful Kansas deer. Thank you, Sid. Old school outdoors. I was really wanting to shoot a, a beautiful buck this morning. Two by two, or the five by five. Had a close encounter with this buck this morning. He came walking past us, just uh, stayed outside of us, stayed behind me and came around in front of us, wouldn't give us the shot. We got to watch him a lot. Michelle saw this buck the first night, so we spotted this deer two and a half days ago and he is just absolutely gorgeous. Are there bigger deer in Kansas? Maybe. <laughs> Hey, but is there a better one for me as far as traditional 28 yards? Nope. And a quick clean kill where you watch him drop. You could just see the dust fly. He died. He died at a dead run and I promise you he didn't make 60 yards. That is an absolutely beautiful Kansas whitetail. I'm so excited I'm looking at this beautiful buck and what does Ryan do? I think you just lost $20. That's not very nice. I'm ecstatic about my deer and Ryan's bringing up the fact that he thinks I lost $20. That is a beautiful buck, isn't he? Yeah, it is. I, but, uh, I hate to kind of bum you out, but I think you just lost $20. <laughs> I hope you're right. I still think he's going to net $130. we will see who's closer. Fred Eichler? Or Ryan Solomon. It's gonna be close. He says he's got me. I got him. <laughs> Fact of the matter is, when we got the buck back and taped him out, I lost $20. He was closer to 140 than he was to 130. Not that it matters, because I would have been just as happy with that first little spike, the two by two, the five by five, the eight point, one of the many other deer that we saw in Kansas. But I was tickle pink. Sid wasn't ready to shoot me because I didn't shoot one of his baby deer, so that worked out great as well. <laughs> <laughs> no. Look at him. Look at him. Oh, he's nice. He is. Like, what is he? 
Is that? That's a deer that we, we had on the, the camera. We said that's the deer we need to kill. Right uh, there. Yes, sir. That's the one that was blowing wow. that cold air. Look at the body uh, on this sucker. Isn't he huge? <laughs> that's what we looked at. That's a mature big deer. I knew you could do it. I had faith in you. Isn't he beautiful?